Hello and welcome to this tutorial. So far we've presented standard spanning tree, the 802.1D, and then the evolution of that into rapid spanning tree. And simply stated, we presented a lot of details. There are a lot of nuances between the two versions and then within each one all of the different port states and the, the roles different ports can play and how convergence takes effect. There's a lot to know and that makes spanning tree a, a rather difficult subject and it's not always the strongest area of knowledge for a lot of network admins. Well, we have some more ground to cover. However, we're not going to get as deep um, into the new flavors of spanning tree as we have so far with standard and rapid. So this is just going to be a brief introduction to three more flavors of spanning tree. The first new flavor of spanning tree is known as per VLAN spanning tree plus. Now sometimes this is written out just as you see it PVST plus and sometimes it's written without the plus. Now this is a Cisco proprietary protocol and what it does is it creates a separate instance of spanning tree for each VLAN. Now originally all VLANs belong to a single instance of spanning tree. So if you think about the port state of a single port on a switch, it could be forwarding or blocking. Well whatever that state is, it would apply to every VLAN that is associated with that particular port. Well, with per VLAN spanning tree, now we can have different port states for each VLAN on the same port. The benefit of doing this is that we get to load balance traffic now. So if we have two links between two switches, normally we would have one servicing all VLANs and the other one is in a blocking state for all VLANs. Well, now we can have some VLANs on one trunk and some VLANs on the other and each is blocking for the other VLANs. Let's take a look at this in a, in a diagram to help illustrate it. So like I said, if we have two switches with redundant links between them, normally we would have all VLANs on one while the other link is blocking all VLANs. So now we introduce per VLAN spanning tree and we get rid of this approach. And what we'll do instead is let's say this link is now forwarding but it's only going to forward for VLAN 1. And this link is going to be forwarding for VLAN 2. That means this link is going to block VLAN 2. And likewise, the other link is going to block for VLAN 1. So we're splitting our VLANs between the two links. Each VLAN has a backup link should a particular connection fail, but now the primary traffic for VLAN 1 is here and the primary traffic for VLAN 2 is here. And that would mean we would have different root ports and designated ports for each of the two VLANs. Okay? So with Per VLAN spanning tree, the main benefit is we split up the VLANs, we get to load balance our traffic, and uh, we have more control over the traffic that way. Okay, let's move on to the next type of spanning tree we want to talk about, and that is RPVST, which stands for Rapid Per VLAN Spanning Tree. And this is extremely similar to the Per VLAN Spanning Tree Plus, and you'll see why in just a second. First, it's also a Cisco proprietary protocol and what we do here is we create a separate instance of rapid spanning tree for each VLAN. So this is pretty much the same as what we just talked about but now we're talking about using rapid spanning tree. So the benefit is we still get our single instance of spanning tree running for each VLAN but it's not just standard spanning tree, it's rapid spanning tree. So we get all of the high speed, the quick v convergence of rapid spanning tree. Okay, so very similar to what we talked about, just take out standard spanning tree and replace it with rapid spanning tree. And that gives you rapid per VLAN spanning tree. Okay, one more to go. Okay, MST is the last version of spanning tree we're going to talk about. And this stands for multiple spanning tree. 
Now, whereas the previous two versions were Cisco proprietary, MST was created by the I3E. So this is a standard, and you might see it referred to as 802.1S, or sometimes you might see it MIST, which stands for Multiple Instance Spanning Tree. All three of those names refer to the same I3E standard. Now, MST works by creating several rapid spanning tree instances, but you don't create one for each VLAN. Rather, what, what you do is, you after you create these several instances, you take a group of VLANs and assign them to each instance. Now, the benefit here is we're load balancing traffic but we're reducing the number of spanning tree instances. So MST is created for an environment where you have many, many VLANs, and creating that many separate instances of spanning tree can at some point be too much to run on the switches. It's not necessarily efficient to do it that way. So here, we're, we're being smarter about creating fewer instances of spanning tree, but we still get the benefit of load balancing all of our traffic. Let's go ahead and diagram this one as well real quick. So again, we'll take a look at two switches with redundant links, and we'll start off by creating two instances of rapid spanning tree, instance A and instance B. And to each instance, we're going to assign a group of VLANs. So on the top, we'll assign VLANs 1 through 49, and to instance B, we'll assign VLANs 50 through 99. Now on the top link, let's say instance A is in the forwarding state. Yet on the bottom link, instance B is in the forwarding state. That would mean that these VLANs are blocked on the bottom link, and likewise these VLANs are blocked on the top link. So we have our redundancy here. Should the top link fail, Instance A will then fail over to the bottom link. So all of our VLANs would then be on the bottom link, and vice versa should the bottom link fail. Okay, so we have our redundancy. Yet at the same time, we've managed to create load balancing. Half the VLANs on top, half the VLANs on the bottom, and finally we've done all of this just by using two instances of rapid spanning tree. So we're being very efficient with our resources. And that's how multiple spanning tree works. Okay, and as promised, we didn't get too deep into any of these new types of spanning tree. This was just an introduction. So to summarize, we now know that there is per VLAN spanning tree plus, as well as rapid per VLAN spanning tree, and they're essentially the same. One uses standard, the other uses rapid spanning tree, and they're both Cisco proprietary. And then the third one we looked at was multiple spanning tree, and that's the I3E standard, where we're enabled to run, again, multiple instances of rapid spanning tree, but here we don't run it for each VLAN. Instead, we create just a few instances and we assign groups of VLANs to each instance. So it's a bit more efficient for high volume VLAN networks. And then finally, we looked at the benefits of each one. At this point in your studies, just be familiar with these three flavors of spanning tree and basically how each one works and the benefits associated with each one. Okay, and so that's it. That is the introduction to per VLAN, rapid per VLAN, and multiple spanning tree. Thanks for watching.